Hi everybody, this is a, um, I'm going to talk about me and modern medicine, and I've probably talked about it in some fashion or other before now, but I'll tell you, I, I remember when the COVID thing started, I, <clears throat> I talked about fear and fear porn and how that's what that was, and I haven't changed my mind at all. Uh, and what I've noticed uh, over time, it's like that was in March, this is in January, almost a year ago, um, more and more masks in this town, more and more people not, not even bothering to signal hello to each other as they walk, uh, more and more bikes going uphill with masks on, more and more people in their cars with, with the windows closed and masks on. It's as if the fear virus is just um, inundating us more and more and more, uh, which means people like me um, have to be more and more and more conscious of that, that current that is constantly swishing through this culture and uh, you know, trying to bring us down into that space where we are afraid of our own bodies and afraid of other people's bodies and um, it's encouraged by modern medicine. Uh, I don't think that you know any particular doctor would say that, but the way medicine works shows that. And so, um, uh, <laughs> and I'm talking as the child of a doctor whose mother was a nurse. Um, they were both fine, fine people in terms of their profession. My dad was an old-fashioned doctor who would go make house calls house calls and really concerned about his patients. Um, he didn't have nearly as much technology as they have now. It was more, he was working on an intuitive level and very, very good at diagnosing simply through intuition, simply through paying attention to signs. Um, you know, they didn't have all those tests back then. Test for this, test for that, test for this, test for that. Medicine has be, become an arm of technology or is an extension of technology. And our bodies are more and more treated by ourselves and everyone else as machines which can be either fixed or not fixed. And that we are separate from our machines. The transhumanist agenda um, goes along with that totally. The more they can, more machine-like our behavior, the more we can be controlled, the more we fit in as cogs to a big societal machine called technocracy. So that's like the upshot of it. That's like the larger political world that we live in. Uh, those of us like me who uh, don't go along with treating my body as a machine, do not go along with not inhabiting my body fully, do not go along with thinking that anything that happens comes from the outside. So I have to be worried about germs. I have to be worried about viruses. I have these things that are trying to get me. It's like they're, they're, they're agents of destruction. I've got to somehow fend them off. How do I fend them off? Well, I ask an authority, and the authority tells me, do this, do that, do this, do that, usually having to do with pharmaceuticals and or, you know, you know technolo technological situations like tests and x-rays and, you know, and then there's the whole chemical realm of chemotherapy and all that stuff, adding more and more stuff to your body, most of which isn't good for it, uh, with no recognition whatsoever, it appears, in the culture at this point, that the body is brilliant, that the body is not a machine, it's an organism, and as such, it is an, an extension of this whole planet, which is an organism, which is a living, breathing, conscious being. Our bodies are that, so is the whole planet. If you study permaculture, you start to recognize that everything interacts with everything else. And it's the whole system that we're constantly working with. So inside the body, everything interacts with everything else. In order to change something, you don't introduce something new, or you might, but usually you allow the body to heal itself because it will. It knows that if something's wrong, what it needs to do is pour resources that it has within it to address the problem one way or another. If you've ever, I'm sure you have, had a cut, like a cut in my hand. I had that not very long ago. And it's so fascinating to watch the body heal a cut. Imagine all the, all the resources that are brought forth 
to have that healing happen. And the body knows how. It knows how. We don't have to tell it anything. We don't have to change anything. We just have to allow it to do its own miracles, which it does on a regular basis, by adjusting our own, our own habits so that they promote harmony within the body. For me, that includes, you know, what I call two, I think I've told this before, but two hours of physical culture a day, which means walking a long distance and um, at a fast walk too, hopefully going uphill some of the time so the cardiovascular system is activated, which includes, you know, other forms of exercise that I do periodically throughout the day, but especially my yoga, Tai Chi, and Qigong every single day. And then it includes eating as well as I possibly can, usually organic, certainly local as much as possible, um, not going to excess in any way. Uh, now, believe me, this is something I've learned. I'm 78 years old now. It's easy for me not to do things in excess where it didn't used to be so easy. Uh, and then I have my chai elixir, which I think we should attach that video to this so people can see how to make that. Uh, which is a chai which um, is antiviral, antibacterial, and anything. It, it introduces natural substances into the body that in relationship to one another connect in terms of the body, and the body then can basically either fend off whatever's coming at it or work with whatever's coming at it to create a harmony within the being after, you know, once you've worked with it. Think of it, it's more like the body is the soil within which you as the plant are growing and the soil contains all sorts of microorganisms or it should, if it doesn't, then the soil is going to be depleted. So you don't want to have your body depleted. You want to have it full of all these different micro microorganisms that, that all together, working together, nourish the plant, nourish us, nourish our bodies. And so that's my basic philosophy. It's like, Pay attention to my own immune system uh, rather than get tested for this, tested for that, get a vaccine for this, vaccine for that, thinking that something coming from the outside is going to actually be the ticket, be the, the final solution. But of course, now they're saying, oh, even if you get vaccinated, you're going to have to keep your masks on, of course, because this virus is going to keep mutating. You know that, don't you? Well, yeah, viruses do mutate. They always do. So what? And a particular virus, as it mutates, apparently, gets less and less strong. And even if this, this may not even be a virus, by the way, this may just be pure fear porn. I don't have any idea. But in any case, I'm sure you've noticed that the, or maybe you haven't, that the statistics for flu are way down. This virus is so smart, it takes over for the flu. And that I'm speaking sarcastically there. So, you know, there's something going on beyond what they're telling us that has to do with putting us into a state of constant fear and therefore we become much more controllable. Therefore, they can do whatever they want with us the more once we get fearful enough. So it becomes so important to recognize that you are sovereign. You are sovereign in your mind. You are sovereign in your body. You are sovereign in your soul. And they all work together as one. And when we're really working on healing ourselves, we recognize that whatever I've got, in quotes, it started out on the soul level. The soul needed to tell me something about myself that I need to learn now. And uh, so it'll give me some kind of indication that turns into a bodily symptom. And then that bodily symptom, if not addressed, becomes more and more serious, more and more serious until we finally pay attention to it. And that is the point where we could address it by ourselves by saying, okay, what is going on here? For example, in, when I was 26 years old, and I probably mentioned this before too, I um, had a very serious um, situation develop. I'm not going to go into the backstory of it, but I ended up with peritonitis, um, generalized peritonitis, starting with the left ovary from an IUD that had punctured the ovary. And, um, and I almost died. And that is when, for the very first time in my life, I heard what I call the voice 
and it was like a boom, a booming voice that was in the hospital room. It was, and they had, the doctor told me I didn't, he didn't know what else he could do for me after seven days of constant antibiotics and they had run out of antibiotics. So, and it was like, am I gonna die? You know, am I gonna die? And he just looked embarrassed and went, went out of the room. And at that point, this booming voice comes in and it goes, live or die, but it was a male voice, live or die. It's your choice. And I was, what? Where are you? What, what is that it's saying to me? And I would say now it is the, it's the voice of my higher self or of a guide, something beyond the physical, something beyond the mental, something that has to do with the spirit or the soul. And it was telling me, this is your moment of choice. You've, you've got yourself now to the point where you're either going to go ahead and die because nobody can do anything for you anymore, or you're going to take charge. And that's what I had to realize, that I had to take charge. That I was free. That I was the one that was responsible. Oh, no. But then I fell asleep. And the next morning, all the symptoms had disappeared. In other words, I must have chosen during my sleep that I was going to live. And so it, my body responded to that. I know that sounds extreme. It sounds like, oh, that doesn't usually happen. Well, it doesn't usually happen, I realize, because we don't realize it's happening a lot of the times. This time was so dramatic, there was no way I could not realize it. And, um, and my life has been my own ever since then. I've been a sovereign being. I am, am incorporated, incorporated inhabiting this body in this lifetime. This body is my <coughs> temple, we call it, remember? It is my, um, you know, my vehicle to go through this third dimensional reality that we have created here, that is, is this earth. Um, and it's um, an extraordinary, an extraordinary being. And think, if we start thinking of our bodies as these extraordinary beings that are teaching us constantly. I also like to think of the unconscious as the, um, as the extension of the body. So the unconscious and the body are the same thing, you might say. So uh, if I have, um, uh, for example, um, I, had, I, I had my wrist, my wrist broke because I, I fell at one point, my wrist broke. This is my writing hand. You know, I had to deal with that. I had to, because I'm a writer, that's what I do. And it was like, wow. So I did go to a doctor. I rarely see doctors, but yeah, okay, orthopedics, you betcha. So I had a, um, a little very spine thing put in there and it, and the wrist healed. But it was a moment of, uh, must have been, I mean, I could look back and find out that it was a moment of uh, doubt in myself, doubt in that as my path, something like that, which would, which would necessitate my body uh, tells me, okay, again, you have to make a choice. Are you really doing this? Are you, is this really who you are? Um, when I was a kid, I had a lot of sore throats um, because I couldn't speak my truth. I didn't even know what my truth was, but it certainly wasn't the indoctrination that I was receiving into a, a mainstream religion. Um, and when I grew up and I started to uh, speak my truth, <clears throat> no thro sore throats. I just don't get them anymore. So... It's like the body gives you these, um, these sim symptoms as symbols for what you need to address. And in that sense, it's a very mysterious being. You know, we think of it not that way. Normally we think of it as a machine that we have to just like, you know, uh, got to get muscle on me or I got to get up to so many miles per whatever. And, you know, we think of our bodies that way. Uh, so we are split from our bodies if we do that. And another thing that helped me understand that um, me and modern medicine don't get along was recognizing on an historical level back to Descartes, D-E-S-C-A-R-T-E-S, -E -E I'm sure you've heard of him, the, the mind and the body are two entirely different things that work in parallel, according to him. So therefore, I think, therefore, I am. Huh? In other words, only my thinking is me? That's what we've been taught. The rest, the, the body is like an object that we draw, that we drag along with us. Uh, it's something separate from the real me, which is my mind. No, no, this body-mind complex that we came in with 
is the whole point of living here on earth is how do we work with these two together? How do we work with them together holistically rather than, um, you know, analyze them into separate parts and then work only with a tiny little part like um, doctors are, are taught to do that. Uh, reductionism we call that. And then they give something a name and once it's got a name then it's, there's a whole series of symptoms that are meant to go behind it and they probably will because those are our expectations. If we don't give something a name then would we have those same symptoms? Would we have the same um, manifestation of all the things we said would happen? Maybe not. I don't know. We've categorized it too much. We've categorized um, diseases too much. And just remember the word disease uh, is dis-ease, being out of ease with yourself, not being comfortable with yourself, not really fully inhabiting your own body. Which reminds me of, uh, my. I had a walk yesterday with an old friend who unfortunately is still in the fear, the fear you know, stayed in some ways because she won't do anything but walk. And um, she has just come back from where she was for six months and she won't come inside and so forth. But she took, we were talking about our kids and she said about one of her kids, one of her kids, she said, he's at home in his body. And that's such a wonderful thing to say about someone. And her other, and he, and so he's happy. And her other kid is not at home in his body. And he's chronically unhappy. So, um, just this is food for thought in terms of, um, you know, how we are in our bodies and how much modern medicine do we really want to accept? And what is it like when you start self-healing? When you start looking for other ways of dealing with whatever's going on in our body? It's um, a magical mystery tour, let me tell you. You're responsible for your own life that way. No authority is over you. You're the one that has to decide. Thanks.